Well, as you can see, we're at the baler. Tractor on and air conditioner on, cooling down. Uh, just do a quick little walk around. I uh, just greased it. Gel fresh grease. Uh, people, a lot of people want me to do another review on this machine since I've had it a while. So I'll do that. As you can, s one thing I, I kind of, I don't know if it's any any longer than my deer balers were, but this tongue. I mean, it seems it seems like it's pretty. You know, it seems like a little bit longer, but that drive line is just super long. And I can actually make really tight turns with this tractor with these duels on them. I'm really surprised. Uh, we'll step down here to our pickup header. You know, our roller's on, but we ain't bailing anything heavy enough to be worrying about that. But I do, I do like these big rollers. This thing's got some heft to it. Uh, I didn't think I was gonna like this. But I love it. I love this solid wind guard. I haven't bailed any big hay grazer with it yet. But for like a wheat when we're bailing and it's too dry yet to bail, this is actually pretty fantastic because as it'll fall, it'll fall down onto this. And you know, this will be kind of built up because they'll be, you know, shoving that stuff in that bale. Well, it'll just, it'll just fall. It just shoots right out of there. So, that's always good. Um, really, augers are nice and nice and big. I actually got a piece of steel back in here the other night that had to get jammed in there and cut out. So far, it feeds really well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it's feeding. Uh, really super light, thin wheat. See, it's not... I've had it, I've had it plug up maybe four times the entire time I've ever owned it. Uh, I shouldn't be making this video right now because, you know, it'll probably just, I'll probably just have hell all night. But, I mean, that's, that's the honest truth. It, it's been doing pretty good. <coughs> Got a little reservoir, oil still clean, everything. Because uh, this is the auto model, so... There's its hydraulic pump. It, man, it's slick. It moves quick. I just hope it doesn't ever break. But that's kind of like everything, you know. No twine boxes. Have them take that out. I don't want them in. I don't offer it as a service. Net wrap or get somebody else to do it. Cause I, I, and that's because of custom work. Uh, twine takes way too much time, too much fuel. You're just sitting there, just way too long. This is the clutch. Uh, I and my dealer told me this when I bought it. These things kind of they'll, well, they'll wear out, but if you blow them out with air, you know, after you're bailing, you know, when you go to service your baler, they last like they don't have any problems with them, but. This thing just gets full of dirt. It just prematurely wears out because it's just grinding all the dirt against everything. And so I'm sure that's true with all of them. But so I always make sure I, I blow it out when I remember to. Uh, this chain may be a little loose. It needs to be tightened. About to one hand this. The doors. I mean, this thing's so tall. I mean, it's just monstrous. I will say that it's kind of kind of ridiculous how tall it is. Uh, that chain down there, I actually tightened my idler up today, uh, first time since I bought it. it. It was just starting to get a little loose, uh, and that's for our deal. I like this, like that. It's pretty nice. This started the other night. Just a little seep from somewhere. Uh, it probably just needs to be hit with a wrench and tightened up. But just a little bitty seep. I don't... Nothing I can... 
complained about. I will say the the grease points are fantastic on this machine. I mean, there's there's no wonder. I've only found one grease circ that wasn't in a grease bank. Net wrap. It's I love. I really do like the system they have for net wrap. Uh, getting your roll, getting it started. Uh, is not not too hard uh, so you just kind of stuff it down there and it works out real good uh, that knife's down uh, the only thing is is this knife is down and like right now so that'd be perfect time to throw your net in there uh, usually about two o'clock in the morning it'll run out of net wrap and you know you'll jump out and throw it in there and the knife will be down and so it won't start as easily, but you can lift that knife up. And I was, I never forget to do it. I just figured out the other day there was an auto wrap button on there. Oh, it took me like a thousand bales to figure that one out. So I was doing everything the manual way. Uh, grease points right here. I like this bar a hundred times better than I like the deer kicker bar. Because all this does is it dumps the bale, and the chamber is up, and this bar goes out, and if the bales roll back, it pushes it, and then the chamber comes in, and then that closes. I mean, as soon as that chamber hits, I'm going, and that thing will close. I don't ever wait for that, uh, but it, it doesn't. You're not blowing the little hooks off the chains like the deers, because you're, you know, you're pushing against big heavy bales, you know, kicking them away. Uh, this is the only grease circ that I didn't know about so far. Everything else is in a bank like this. Uh, you know, top top bearing, then these two for your pressure. Uh, your computer. Sadly, everything has a computer now. Then I want to talk about this right here. There is a uh, a cover for this. Um, biggest piece of shit in the world as far as the cover goes. Could never keep it on. Uh, it's probably the conditions I work in. Yeah, because I had it off, you know, I took it off and I, I'd spray that and then it, it, it latches around this and then, and then that clips on it. But for some reason, it always, it kept falling off. And I think it, I think I hit like a big, really bad bump somewhere and it rattled loose. But it is somewhere out in this field. No, no clue where the hell it's at. None whatsoever. So that brings us back to this side. And that's a camera I had off uh, my square baler. So I was watching my bales come off. And I was going to put it on the back so I could see the bales leave. But as you can see, this is what the what I see in the cab. I see the hay come up. I see it hit that starter roll, those belts, and I actually see that feet, hay feed up in there. I can actually, and you can't see that from the cab. You know, looking back, you just cannot see that. And I can actually see a plug happen before I hear a plug. And so, like, this dry wheat, it's real short, and it, you know, this is, that's as tall as it is. I mean, that's eight inches, maybe, uh, nine inch, something like that. There's some of it that's, you know, 18 inches, not very big. And if it doesn't want to, you know, if it won't start, I can actually see it and you'll hear those, uh, you'll, those, uh, those rods that go back, they'll kick up and they'll be, they'll be thumping against this roller and you can, you can hear that. And but you can see it happen beforehand. And once that thing starts going, you know, it being really dry, it all of a sudden you, uh, you know, it'll get real dusty and then you can't see. But when you stop and you stop feeding in there, and then all the dust stops falling, then you can see, then you can see the net on the bale. Because your bale, you know, there, there's your roller there 
this is your starter roll. Well, the edge of the bale will be right there in between the two. And so when you start feeding net wrap into it, you can actually see that net wrap feeding onto that bale. I mean, it is just slicker than hell. It honestly is great. Then that chamber will open up and you can actually see the bale roll out of the machine and you can see if you had any problems with the net going on the bale, anything like that. It just, man, that's the way to do it. If you're going to do it, put a camera right there. Now I bail, I bail until I can't, and it's usually at night, so 10, 12 hours at a time, as long as the hay allows it, and man, it, it sure saves your neck, because I can see the entire baler looking forward through the mirrors and everything, so I know if the damn thing's on fire, just because I can see all my mirrors, I know if the hay's feeding, because of the camera. And I look back occasionally, but all I gotta do is stay uh, steady on what I'm doing, and it just works out really well. So this hay here, uh, this hay's been in the field for about a week or so, and it's been rained on, but got our, I'm putting three deals of wrap on, and as you can see, i got a little more space here. I need to adjust where my roll sits in the dill. I need to move it a little, uh, just barely. But, you know, this is all super fine. You can tell it's rain because you got feed coming back up. But, yeah, I'm, I'm extremely happy. It makes a good bail. It really does. Uh, if, it, if it won't plug on the super dry stuff, which out of... Out of uh, 1,500 bales, I've had it. Uh, I've had it plug twice, three times with last year, three or four times. I had I had one I had to dump because uh, that piece of metal locked that header down, shit like that. But so far, I'm pretty pleased. I'd love to get it in some hay grazer. Uh, that'll be this hopefully this year, but it does does a good job. I I don't do the coverage edge anymore. I got tired of replacing bearings and John Deere balers because you got if something tears on that that coverage edge, it sucks up in a, on a roller, and it it's, it goes in the baler. It doesn't go anywhere else. It goes in the baler, and it holds dirt and heat against that bearing. And then you're chasing your baler with a fire extinguisher. So, even though this is a different baler, I just don't do that anymore. I don't. I, I probably won't offer it because if the baler burns, they ain't gonna buy me another baler. As far as the customer's concerned. So, but as you can see here, I won't keep you too long. I've got, got my header there, and my monitor, moist, moisture meter, so that sun is right there. Uh, one, two, three. So I'm watching what's going on all the time. But, uh, so I guess we'll get to the good part of it. Well, my thoughts on the machine, uh, I don't have any bad thoughts about the machine. I really don't. I'm very, very happy with with my purchase. I've seen some scuttlebutt on the old internet. You know, people people bitching and moaning about these massy balers. But you know, they probably all got a heart on for John Deere or something like that. I had John Deere balers. Those are good, good balers. They were used balers. That's where a lot of my trouble came from. They were highly used balers. Is this baler going to have problems? You better believe it's going to have problems. Uh, will it last as long? I don't know. Is the auto cycle something a person really needs? No. But it's nice. I mean, it really is nice. Because you get, like I said, you start baling 
as long as I do, and it's in, you know, two, three o'clock in the morning, and you're just tired, that thing beeps, you're hitting the lever, and you're, you know, you realize it's beeping, telling you it's putting a wrap on, and you're just dumping the bale. I've done that. I, everyone I know has done that. Um, this doesn't do that. Now, it'll beep, and I'll be wanting to put it back into gear, but, uh, so that's, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Uh, ask me in, you know, 11,000, 15,000 bales what I think of the bailer. You know, that's a good, honest deal, but as far as it being a good, reliable bailer, yeah, I think it's a fantastic bailer. Have I seen the problems that other people are seeing? No, I haven't. Um, could it be that, you know, they... They, uh, you know, some people just aren't happy. They're just not happy people. And, you know, say they, I don't want you in that sun, so, uh, say that they just bought the baler, you know, for some, whatever reason they bought the baler, and they just are either super picky, or they're just, they wanted to hate it from the start. I, I know people like that. They want to hate something before they even really give it a chance um but you know that's that's how things go i had another guy ask me he was like well what do you recommend john deere or massey i told i told him this i was like who's your better service department who's got a better who's and some people will take that as well i shouldn't need a good service department you need a good service department if you're gonna you know issues pop up that's why I went with the Massey because I and I had a 569 exact same price, better interest on the Deer machine. I really was better interest. It was two percent. This was four percent. Um, but the dealer I was going to buy it from is 130 miles, and you got to go through a big, big town. And you know that's that's a good long ways. And this dealer is. We're in Dalhart, where I usually do majority of my work and get all my parts anyway. And if there's a problem, they show up. And so, and the John Deere dealer that is there, they're great with tractors, but they're not so great on hay equipment. I've got reasons, you know, behind that. I've sent them hay equipment. So, go with whoever is going to be the best service department who is going to make sure that you stay in the field because it doesn't matter what color it is i mean you could even buy a new holland like ted taylor i mean or a vermeer uh but it's it's really who's who's going to keep you in the field that's what it boils down to doesn't matter what color it is and because at some point they're all going to break Baylor, Baylor's are just that way they, they're all going to have an issue at some point in time. And sometimes you just get so stressed out, you don't, you don't have, you know, you get all worked up and you can't figure out what the issue is. And it, it's just nice to have somebody to call. Here's a little wildlife for you. Antelope. So... since we've moaned and groaned for 20 minutes now. I'm going to do another review on this baler at the end of the year. After I've, you know, put a good good year through it. We're having a good year so far. i got uh, got to finish this circle up and I've got another circle that's on the ground and then i got to cut all my own hay and I'm going to double crop some of it for another hay crop. And we'll see where that, you know, we'll see where the year takes us. Um, I hope that I have truly nothing but good things to say about this, you know, until I decide to sell the machine because it's completely worn out. But we'll see. We will see. I, the only thing I can, I can probably not figure out that I want is the auto cycle. I do really like it, but as the machine ages, you know, you have to wonder about, uh, you know, 
all the sensors and everything, how how well that's gonna that's gonna hold up. But so far so good. Another bail.